Hello and welcome uh, to episode five of News from the Gelding. Now, um, it's fairly early, um, around well, nine o'clock or so in the morning. I don't normally make the video this early, but um, the internet is so slow. It takes so long to upload the videos. I thought I'd do it early and then it can do its uh, thing during the day whilst I can get on with other things. Um, me and my partner Vanessa, we live in a um, an old Georgian house or an apartment in a an old Georgian house, and it's listed. Um, so aside from having terrible insulation and damp problems, it, we we're stuck with this with um, a type of internet where well you can't we can't have fibre. So um, yeah, so it's all slow. Um, right, so today, as usual, I'll, I'll talk about what I've done during the week and then I'll get on with talking about today's topic, which is expanding a bit more on the Gelders that I've mentioned a few weeks ago. So I haven't got any um, time-lapse stuff or anything today. I haven't done any artwork as such. But um, yeah, so apologies. Rambling throughout, I imagine. Um, right, so what have I done t um, this week? Um, so I've I started doing working on the painting in, in terms of pre preparing for it. So the drawing I showed you last week, I've been reworking slightly. I wasn't happy with a few things, um, but but at the back of my mind, I was thinking I need to get a proof copy ready, uh, a paperback, so I can check it's all okay so this this week i've been doing lots of formatting um choosing fonts laying it out all the margins and all of that um and also designing a mock cover for the book so the back and the spine and and the front cover so for that i use my i'm not going to show you that because it, it'll probably be more or less the same once i've done the painting um but I, I for, for this mock-up, I just coloured the drawing I showed you last week in Photoshop. It looked quite nice, I think. Um, but I still want to do the painting because um, I, well, I plan to do this painting and uh, I'll do it, I suppose. Well, I will. Um, so that, that took most of the week. Um, it was very time consuming, but I've got a proof copy in the works and hopefully I'll get it um, next week. Um, I don't know. I might show you that, possibly. Uh, in terms of my work, um, my job application, um, I, I've managed to find my old English qualifications and I've emailed them to the council on Monday and um, I haven't heard anything since. So I've sent it to two separate emails and still heard nothing. So. I'll have to follow that up um, next week if I don't hear any more. Um, yes, anyway. Um, in terms of the painting, yeah, I've transferred the rework drawing and it's on the canvas. And I'll start painting hopefully later on today. Um, I. It's a fairly complex composition and I'll be doing it in oil paints. Um, and due to the way I work, I like quite fine detail. It's a bit of a nightmare, really. Um, I mean, it could take a very long time if I, because you have to wait for certain layers to dry and it can take, depending on the type of pigment, it can take around a week for a, you know, for a layer to dry. It's just ridiculous. So I'm trying to find a way of managing it so I can work diff on different parts and just keep it going the whole time rather than having to waste time waiting for it to dry. It's, it's a pity in a way I don't use acrylics because um, it would take a matter of a few days probably to finish the painting, but, um, but I haven't, so I can. <laughs> um, so, um, and I'll probably do a time-lapse video of that, um, which I'll show when it's, whenever it's finished. Hopefully. So, okay, that's the um, that's that amazing news out of the way. 
Um, thank you to all the friends and family that have been watching my videos. Um, I'm not getting a hell of a lot of views from other people, but, um, but I, I, I imagine it's a slow burn or, or it may just burn and die and then I uh, just don't get many views. But I said at the beginning, I'm, you know, I just want to do this and if people come, they come. If they don't, they don't. But uh, the friends and family that, that do watch, um, don't feel as though you have to watch. Um, I know it's um, fantasy isn't everyone's cup of tea. Um, so don't worry if you don't if you don't fancy it you don't have to watch it <laughs> anyway right so last time I did uh, it was a couple of few weeks ago now I talked I was talking about the Gelders which are the the dominant race that you you come into contact with in the first book and their forest dwelling um, uh, race of people um, uh, loosely based on Japanese culture, American Indian, Native American Indian and um, Aborigine cultures. So I wanted to talk a little bit more about how I um, was inspired to write about a forest in the first place. Um, so I go back again to when I lived in Japan for a year, so it was in a remote um, part of Okayama, um, up in the mountains. And the mountains mm, 80% of Japan is is mountains um, along the spine of Honshu and all the main islands have ma uh, mountains and they're not very heavily inhabited so most people live a lot around the coast um, so the mountains they're not very they're not densely populated and they're covered in forest and mostly pine forest um, and that was the situation where I lived and it was a fairly oppressive and claustrophobic place to live in a way because some sometimes the only way to see the sky is to look up to see the sky um, because the trees are so tall and so dense um, and sometimes go for a walk I'd go for a walk in in the in the forest and, and quite hard to walk around them and certain trails you could follow um, some really interesting trails actually um, one of them was supposedly haunted uh, by a samurai. Uh, I never saw any um, samurai ghost there, but it was. But say, saying that, it's fairly eerie. Um, I'm going off here. Going off, I'm rambling again. Um, but anyway, there's a little track trail that threaded up through the mountain, and 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 part way up, it opened up into very old um, rice fields that have just gone, you know, being reclaimed by the forest. But it was very, it was a kind of eerie atmosphere because it was a place that had been abandoned um, and very quiet, you know. Well, there's another good thing about it there, it was very quiet. There's no traffic or anything like that. Um, but yeah, so that forest kind of informed some of the things I wrote about in the book. And also bamboo and bamboo thickets were interwoven within that forest, within the forest. Uh, one of my jobs when I was working for the family was trying to stop the bamboo encroaching upon the gardens that surrounded where they lived. So um, and that involved getting a spade and um, uh, chopping off the young bamboo shoots as they're coming up. Now, if you got a, if you get a young one and it'll slice right through, and if it's if it's slightly older, it's like hitting. Um, a steel bar so you've got to be careful but anyway these far these bamboo thickets are very very dense and some you could try and walk through them but it's very difficult but the bamboo then kind of informed my idea about this material that's in the book called willowing so it's 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 kind of like bamboo but it's also like willow as the willow the willow tree we know of um, so it's some somewhere between the two and the idea was that and bamboo, especially in Japan in the past, was used for all manner of things. And it still is to a certain extent, making chopsticks and or tatami mats, all kinds of things can be made from bamboo. So I, I realized that this material, if I changed it a bit in my fantasy world, it could be quite a useful material. Um, I'll go on to say a little bit more about that in a minute. But... Uh, the other influence was forests and woodland 
from England, specifically southwest England, where, where I'm from. Um, I visited um, the Forest of Dean before, um, that influenced uh, Tolkien, um, and various other woodlands that I've, I just like walking around woodland occasionally. Um, there's a nice one outside of Exeter, uh, where I live. Um, there's some nice ones in in Cornwall, where, where I was, where I grew up. Um, and also there's Dartmoor, which is a very large national park um, in Devon. Um, I, I believe some of the film War Horse, I think some of it was filmed there. Anyway, um, and it's a massive expanse. It's very rugged. Um, in places but there's also pockets of woodland and some of it's very ancient um, one particular one is called um, I think um, Wistman's Wood um, and that they believe is dated from as far back as 7000 BC um, now it's a very small remnant um, but but back then that forest would have covered the entire probably the whole the whole country before the meth uh, mephalific, um community yeah cultures chopped it all down and used it um but as it exists today it's it's um i mean it's undeniably ancient it's it's all wizened and the trees are all tangled and but and everything's covered in moss it's quite an extraordinary place um so that was another thing that that influenced the look of you'll see moss for example in in my book but anyway, um, right, what else has I I've got some other thing pointers here? Um, hmm. So, I mean, for, um, fantasy in itself um, often exaggerates natural forms. So that's, it's, it's like um, our reality, but it's skewed in a certain way. Sometimes it's totally unrecognisable as anything to do with our reality. But mine is, is kind of skewed a bit. So it's, because it's all around uh, the protagonist is, is someone from our world and he thinks it could possibly be a delusion that he's suffering. Everything is, is like what it would be here. So trees, he thinks he recognizes types of trees, but when he studies them more closely, he realizes that they're completely different. But so it's I found that quite interesting playing with that idea. So um, going on about the willowing I was talking about. So there's other a, a particular um, people within the Gelder society that um, function as gardeners. Um, they're called melders. Um, they do various things. They look after the forest um, and they also they're able to as I said before they're able to use this willowing to make objects uh, tools and weapons and things like that they can also make their own homes they can grow their own homes um, in whichever shape they wish um, uh, sometimes they're up in trees sometimes they're in meadows or in glades or wherever or in, within the forest itself um, and so that each one is a different shape you know depending on who's made it so it's like the mark of the artist almost they can choose what shape and whatever um, I don't say about this this part of it in the books but the house is also because it's all grown it's all natural the houses can create a certain amount of food for whoever lives there, a kind of staple food um, to so that during the winter, for example, they can still live without having to hunt animals and things like that. So it's a reciprocal kind of system that they've developed. Um, if they want anything different or, you know, more uh, interesting, perhaps they have to go foraging or whatever. The houses also produce light um, in the evenings. Um, like bio, bioluminescent plants that are interwoven within the ceiling, for example. Um, so it's quite an interesting um, scenario, really. Um, I just tried to, to imagine 
how uh, a culture that are essentially vegan um, could survive with a bit of help here and there from the forest. Um, hmm. So then the other very important thing, this is the last thing I'll talk about, is the melders can also create carvings. Well, I call them carvings, but they don't actually, you know, manually carve out the wall. But the walls of their houses have a, a kind of embossed design. And this is formed by, again, these, these people called melders. And they basically they touch the wall or the substance that forms their home. And they're able to impart a shape or, you know, a pattern within that wall. Um, that informed then the way I, like I've shown you before, the lino cut and it also um, it's informed the way I've designed the cover and the map that that'll appear in it, and which I'll show you all this later um, in another episode. Um, but these carvings, they're not merely carvings. Um, so when the when James, the main character, first encounters them, he just believes them to be a design on the on the wall, a very complicated design, and and also quite strange because it it seems as though it's more than it appears. But what you later realize is that these these walls contain stories um, that that contain history and law um, folklore things like that all kinds of information that can be gleaned by looking at it in a very special way it's 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 a little bit like like a magic eye paint uh, picture where you look at something you stare at it long enough and you see something else it's a bit like that but it's more so it's almost as though you you're transported into another world almost a bit like virtual reality might be if you know what i mean um so you you inhabit another place that contains this, this story it's very far-fetched um and but it you know it's kind of feasible within a fantasy setting um it's like magic almost um yeah so yeah, there, there we are. I, I don't want to go into too much detail because it's all in the book. Um, and, if, and if you fancy reading it, then... But I think it's... Um, from I've read a lot in, in, my, in the past, and I, I've never come across this particular idea um, or this, you know, the culture that I've developed for this book. So I think it's fair. It's, 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 um, it's original, I, I believe. So if you want to try something a bit different within the fantasy genre, then... Yeah, give it a go. Um, but when is it coming out? <laughs> That's the other thing. Okay, so I don't still don't know. So when I, once I get this um, uh, proof copy, um, which will be next week, I can see what kind of standard it is, and then I'll I'll know if there's much to change. If there isn't, then I'll have a very good idea of when it's going to be coming out. And it's uh, and it's it's no more than a month from now. I I can't imagine it being any more than that because uh, the, the book is in the form. Uh, formatting in my mind is, is absolutely fine it's, it's just waiting for this painting to be done that's all so yeah um i think i'll leave it there for now um so this week i'm gonna focus on the painting hopefully i'll hear back from the council and start and i have to start learning about mid devon and how to find remote villages that i have no idea how where they are yet uh, because i've got to have this um knowledge test um, yeah, well, and if all goes well, I'll see you next Friday. Um, yeah, okay, I better go. Cheerio, have a nice week. <laughs>